Are there advantages to aging? Yes, I am Debbie Jo Horton and welcome to Advantages to Aging. Join my guests and I as we discuss aging and what makes for a healthy lifestyle, which results in a quality life. Thank you for joining me today. Hey, listeners, I am very excited to introduce you to Lynn Wadsworth. She has a company called Holistic Health and Wellness and is a podcaster herself with the podcast Living Life Naturally. So you're going to want to go check that out. Um, and I started blogging. So if you go to the Advantages to Aging website, you'll find some great new blogs there and they will be updated on the 1st and 15th of every month. So leave me some comments when you see those blogs and and give me some feedback so I know which direction to continue taking those in. So welcome, Lynn. I'm so excited to be able to interview you today. Thanks. It's an honor to be here. Fantastic. So listeners, we are going to broach that taboo subject of menopause. (laughs) So why do you think those that subject of menopause has been taboo for so long? Like what changes are being made to help women really understand perimenopause and menopause and not have it be that taboo subject anymore? So I have to think back to um, to my childhood and my mother and my aunts going through all of that, and you just didn't talk about it. I mean, my mom, in the end, had a hysterectomy, and we didn't talk about the reason. We didn't talk about what that did to her body. And it goes along with the other subject that was taboo when I was growing up was really when you started your periods. I mean, your mom and dad or your, your mom had this conversation with you and told you about stuff like that, but it wasn't widely published. And I have to say, when I first came to the States and they had advertisements on for tampons, I just about blushed and walked out of the room because nothing like that was ever on the TV. We just did not discuss the subject of women's health like that. And I don't really know why that maybe it was like that old age thinking of women should be in the kitchen and be the wife. And, you know, I mean, we've we've just come so far to where now we have so many health coaches like myself who work in the arena of of menopause and it's just been really eye-opening when you talk to people and when I've podcasted with people because they've all experienced the same thing that we just didn't talk about it it was a subject about women's health and intimacy that just wasn't talked about but now it, it's open. People are beginning to talk about it. And it's an eye opener to you mentioned perimenopause, but most people think, oh, I'm going into menopause and that's what it is. And really, the doctors, the Western doctors really don't know enough about it. if you go into a GP and say, can you do a hormone check on me because I feel like I'm going into menopause, they'll do blood levels and it depends what time of the month it is. If if you're close to your period, it's, and even if they find out they're off whack, they don't know what to do about it. So I, I think that a lot of them feel inadequate to be able to answer the questions women may pose. And so it's not widely talked about really in the community of healthcare providers. Uh, unless you find a good gynecologist or a good functional medicine or some kind of natural doctor who works in that arena. So I never realized, as most people don't, that when you go into what we call menopause, you're not really going into menopause because menopause begins 12 to 18 months after you've had your last period. So then that's really menopause and then you become postmenopausal. So that whole arena where it can be anywhere from a year or two to 18 years for women, 
um, is really when you're in perimenopause, when you're having all the symptoms and you're feeling like garbage and you don't know what to do. So it's very interesting and not widely explained to people. I know my own daughter had gone in recently to the doctor and asked them to do her blood levels on my recommendation. And they came back and said to her, well, you're close to your period, so these could be off. But according to these, you are not menopausal. And I said to her, you need to go by what your symptoms are because you're very probably perimenopausal. So I think there's a lack of knowledge there um, for a lot of people that don't understand the whole process. And that's what got me excited about talking about this subject, because we don't know enough about it. And as women, we need to know what's going on in our bodies so that we can address those issues because the symptoms vary person to person and the severity of them um, are so different for different people. Yes, that is so true. I oftentimes in networking events will start off talking about menopause to which most of the women applaud and most of the men want to like crawl under a rock. (laughs) And, And unfortunately, so many women have that belief that you have menopause for a couple of years and then then you're done with it like I'm sorry you're never done with it until you're dead <laughs> like I hate, right. to, hate to tell you there is the perimenopause there's menopause and then there's postmenopause and I remember my grandmother well into her 80s having hot flashes you know and right. and um I remember someone saying well you should be done with those by now and she was like says who <laughs> like I have, I like everybody just doesn't talk about it. You're right. Um, or they only talk about different pieces of it. And then they think that because I reached that age, it must be something else. Um, and you brought up Western medicine. I know that it's very slow and happening, but some Western medicine practitioners are starting to address these issues, yes. but how can women add some more natural solutions into their daily lives that are going to help to reduce the symptoms? Cause that, I mean, you can't get rid of the perimenopause, the menopause or the postmenopause because that's not possible unless you're right. six feet under. Um, So, but I do know that there are a lot of natural solutions that we can add into our daily lives that are really going to help us to deal with those symptoms, whether they're severe or not severe. And they can really be very simple solutions. Um, So just like I talk about putting simple, healthy lifestyle steps into into your life. It's the same with menopause. You've got to be taking care of your body. You have to have adequate sleep. Um, Of course, when it comes to sleep and a lot of people have the hot flashes, there's now so much out there on the market that can help. They have these cooling pads that you can put in your bed to help cool you down. Um, You know, there's a lot of natural types of products on estrogen, progesterone, creams that you can rub in. But the problem with that is that you've got to know what your levels are to be able to properly handle that. So I often start with women just on things like starting with sleep. How is your sleep? Because at this point in our life, it can get maybe you can't fall asleep or you you wake up a lot. So we work on sleeping habits. We work on ways to get better sleep because that's a big part of staying healthy. I work through um, foods and the different foods that you can eat and the the different ways that you can eat because, of course, at this age, we're putting on the belly fat and the visceral fat that we have is really the most dangerous part of our body where we can store it so we want to be able to be eating foods that can help us get rid of that belly bloat even things as simple as drinking lemon water making sure you have adequate amount of water throughout the day but diet is a huge part of it and where we may have been programmed 
And I say program because if we're eating a lot of sugar and processed foods, our brain is is programmed for us to eat that. So we want to ditch things like that, go as natural as possible with our eating um, and making sure we're well hydrated. Looking to take the important steps towards a slimmer, healthier you? We're here to help. Neora Fit combines a line of innovative dietary supplements that support your body around the clock with sustainable lifestyle habits that help you achieve and maintain your fitness and weight loss goals. We've spent years researching the right ingredients and technologies to help support a sustainable fit lifestyle. Not only are these products true to our promise of providing natural and clean formulations to provide you with scientifically backed results, but we've combined the product with a program based on the principles of the book, The Slight Edge, giving you healthy daily disciplines to help you compound your results over time. And we've also developed a support system to share fitness knowledge and encourage you every step of the way. Back to the show. The sleep, kind of moving back to sleep. I know uh, oftentimes, uh, friends and women that I know go, yo, I get plenty of sleep for my age. Like, what mm. does that mean? What, like, is there a prescribed number of hours you're supposed to be sleeping? And I'm like, no, your body needs eight hours of sleep. doesn't matter how old you are. Like, like right. it needs at least eight hours. Um, and the quality of that sleep really matters too. It like does. just sleeping and getting up and down and up and down doesn't mean that you're really sleeping. Right. Um, someone shared with me and I'll share it with you. I don't know if you've heard this, um, a drop of peppermint oil at the base of your yes. skull will help reduce any, uh, severe hot flashes. And I thought, how simple is that? How yeah. can that possibly yeah. be? But, oh my goodness, that works so well. So if you are dealing with a lot of those, keeping some of that peppermint essential oil beside your bed is really a good little tip there. So what are some of the other natural solutions that we might have? Are there some specific, simple steps that women can take in their midlife to help them feel happier, healthier, more balanced in their hormones and feeling much more confident? So, you know, again, it comes down to these basic principles of making sure you're taking care of yourself. Self-care becomes a huge part of what we should be putting into our everyday life. And let's address the elephant in the room. Self-care is not selfish. Self-care is something that we need to be doing for ourselves. We can't give of ourselves if we're drained, if we're tired, if we're not taking those measures. So self-care doesn't necessarily mean, let me go off and get a massage. Let me go to the beauty salon today and get a pedicure and a manicure. It can be things as simple as taking small breaks of 15 minutes a day, get, getting some time in nature, taking a, a walk, making sure that we're exercising throughout this time in our life. Um, I think that's more important than ever because the capacity of our lungs begin to decrease if we don't do things like walking and keeping our lungs functioning properly. And of course, it's heart healthy and helps you get rid of that belly fat, gets rid of some of the stress. Um, exercise in and of itself is a huge benefit to women. So if they're not moving, they need to start moving. If they don't, if they say, well, I hurt all over or I'm in a lousy mood, that's really a good motivational reason to do it because you'll find that after getting out in, in the fresh air or engaging in some type of movement or exercise, it can change your whole outlook on the day. It can take that mood where we tend to have the mood swings and of course, it increases the endorphins and the feel-good hormones for us. Um, if we're exercising, it can balance our hormones. And then when we think about balancing hormones, I do often, if it's really hard for my women, um, I have a great detox. So I mentioned the word detox and I laugh because people think of detox, oh my gosh, I'm going to be starving myself 
for days and um, I just can't do that. Well, I do a natural food detox and it balances the hormones. It helps you with food sensitivities. Of course, it helps you with the weight. And you can do it for as little as seven days, 10 days, 14 days, 21 days. But it's all food related. So the types of food that you eat help you to balance your hormones. So, you know, it's a great way to jumpstart you into better health and a more balanced life. But but it's important during this midlife phase that we're leading that balanced life, that we'll, we're making sure we're exercising, hydrating, eating properly, getting enough rest, making sure we've got those self-care blocks of time added in there and and then making sure our stress levels are lowered and a lot of that we have to do through self-care maybe people like to meditate and let me mention when I first heard about meditating I thought it was kind of woo-woo yes. and I would not engage in it but what I've learned is that it's as simple as a 30 second visualization if that floats your boat so to speak and I do it by imagining myself on the beach. I hear the sounds around me. I smell the, the, the ocean smell. I feel the sunshine on me. You engage all of your senses. It may be the beach for you. It may be the mountains. It's kind of your happy place. But it can take you out of yourself for 30 seconds to one minute and help to relieve some of that stress. Then some simple breathing techniques that you can learn that can really, um, it's it, it's so simple, but breathing can really help decrease that stress. And let's face it, they're all hormones that are involved with stress. So it's important to balance that out and learn how to, to keep our stress levels managed. Yeah, and you know, I know that um, women oftentimes are, afraid of the breathing like they do shallow breaths because you don't want your stomach to look bigger than it is and it's so important to take those really deep breaths, deep breaths. and the other thing I find too is like people go like oh I you know like I, I'm I'm no good at walking because they're thinking everybody talks about 10,000 steps a day we well, don't start there if you're right. not a walker you don't immediately start thinking all right I'm going to you know start working 10,000 steps a day like measure how many steps that you currently are work, work walking at and then increase that, even if it's just increasing at 5%, like just slowly increase till you get to that point where you are you are at the 10,000 steps or more. Some people walk 10,000 steps on a regular basis because that's part of their job. So once your body has gotten accustomed to that, you actually need to walk more than that in order for right. it to feel like it's exercised. Right. So before we wrap up, can you give our audience like one or two really easy tips or tricks that they can put into their life as soon as they're done listening to this podcast? Yeah, so the, the biggest the biggest tip for us as women at this age is the sleep issue, to really work on the sleep. And people say, well, you know, how do you do that? Well, it can be very simple. Um, ditch your devices people groan at that ditch your devices for at least an hour before bedtime and have some kind of bedtime routine it could be soaking in a tub just brushing your teeth and cleaning off your makeup just some kind of routine that's telling your brain oh it's sleep time if you have trouble sleeping you mentioned the peppermint there's another couple of essential oils that i highly recommend one is lavender one is cedar wood and rub them on the base of your feet. That's where the biggest uh, pores in our body are. And so it will be absorbed quicker. And then if you wake up in the middle of the night, you just rub some more on and, and it will calm you again to go back to sleep. But if you've got a good sleeping habit, so your brain is aware of the fact it's sleep time, it will help with the sleep. And then as I mentioned, this is a huge thing. Try to ditch the processed food and all the sugars because therein for us in midlife is, a, and really any time in our life, but that is a huge, huge thing um, that can take you from feeling drained, fatigued, um, 
moody to feeling energized, feeling um, in a better frame of mind. And the last thing I want to say is practice an attitude of gratitude because we have these mood swings as, as we get to this mid-like phase. If you can start practicing gratitude, you'll not only find it helps, and I, w- I did a live today in my group, and it was there are studies that actually show that this helps us sleep better. It helps our self-esteem, which we need in this phase of life. And it helps to lift our mood and change our mindset. So it's a big thing and it doesn't have to be a big, huge thing. It can be, I'm so grateful that I woke up this morning and maybe I have some energy. It can be so simple, Um, but that's a, a big thing. Wow, listeners, I don't know about you, but I just learned a whole lot that I'm going to institute immediately. Thank you, Lynn, so much for sharing with our listeners. What are you going to implement today? Let me know. Until next time, I'm DJ Horton with Advantages to Aging. Do you think one of the biggest advantages to aging is all the knowledge we gain along the way? Me too. What did you learn today? Share with me in my Facebook group with the same name as this podcast, Advantages to Aging. Now hit subscribe so you don't miss all the tips to come in future episodes.